Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Sanborn. If you've lived very long and you've worked very many places, you've probably worked for a leader who really couldn't lead. They had the title or the position, but not the skill set. And I think most people today in the world know that just because you have a title doesn't make you a leader. But you know what I think most people don't know? To me, the important point isn't that having a title doesn't make you a leader. It's that not having a title should never keep you from leading. That everybody at every level has an opportunity to lead. This conference is about servant leadership. It's about being a world changer. I got news for you. Everybody's a world changer. The only question is, what kind of change are they making? Let's get rid of this myth that you can be neutral that you can move through life some kind of phantom vapor not affecting others around you everybody makes a difference at the end of the day the question is what kind of difference did you make did you build people up did you diminish them did you move the ball down the field did you take a loss did you enrich the experience for the customer or did you lessen it because here's the first job of leadership the first job of leadership is to prove significance to others that's what leaders do Leaders take the man or woman who doesn't think they're a leader and says, you can lead, you are a leader, you just need to know two things. It's what I base my work on. Number one, when is it appropriate to lead? Because people don't want to overstep their bounds. See, most of you in the room today are what I call big L leaders. You have titles. You've been charged with leading. It's what you do. But I think we need to pay attention to the little L leaders. I wrote a book for people who would never go into a bookstore looking for it. Because you know who my target market was? The man or woman that says, you know, I don't necessarily want to move into management, but I want to make a difference, a positive difference. I want to do more to impact my organization than I'm already doing, and regrettably, they're not buying leadership books. <laughs> By the way, the other great irony is, is most of my audiences are leaders. So if I ever republish the book, we're going to change the subtitle. You don't need a title to be a leader. But if you have a title, it won't mess you up if you do it right. I mean, I don't want you to think I've got anything against titles. I just think they're highly overrated. And what we need to do as leaders is we need to invite others into leadership. Problems are too big. Can't do it alone. I don't care how enlightened, how skilled you are as a leader. You cannot do it alone. Mark Sanborn is a world-class leadership keynote speaker who delivers practical, cutting-edge insights in a style that has been described as expertise with eloquence. Mark's ability to tailor his presentations is so effective that audience members sometimes wonder if he's worked there. It's no surprise that Mark is one of the youngest speakers ever inducted into the Speaker Hall of Fame. It also wouldn't surprise you to know that Mark Sanborn is a member of the much admired Speakers Roundtable, comprised of 20 of the top speakers in the United States. I was coming out of a restaurant in Santa Monica called Ivy's. It was some years ago, and I'd had dinner with uh, one of the, the agents that books me. And as we were going back to our respective cars, a very hopeful homeless man approached us, a, a street beggar. And he said, hey, buddy, could you spare a hundred bucks? <laughs> if you heard me last year, you heard me say this. People think speakers make stuff up to get a laugh. I make nothing up. My life is far stranger than my limited imagination. I couldn't make this stuff up if I tried. So this, this beggar says, buddy, can you spare a hundred bucks? And I normally don't engage, but this stopped me. I said, you know what, man? I said, if you'd asked for a dollar, I'd have given it to you without thinking about it. If you'd asked for ten dollars, I might have given it to you just because you had the chutzpah to ask. But a hundred dollars? Are you kidding me? He said, look, buddy, either give me the money or don't. Just don't tell me how to run my business. So leadership is an invitation to greatness we extend to others. But here's the catch. You can't give an invitation to a party you ain't having. If you don't aspire to be great, if you don't play at a higher level, you have no credibility when you invite others. That's the the self-check of leadership. Are we committed to playing at the standard we ask others to play at? Do we aspire as high as we ask others to aspire?
I was speaking uh, at Caesars in Las Vegas a couple weeks ago, and, and I had a morning session, and I was a hurry, hurry to get in. I got in late the night before. I didn't have a registration badge, and I'm rushing through to get in. There's a security guy named Joel, I came to find out later. He said, whoa, hang on, buddy, where's your badge? I said, yeah, listen, I'm speaking, I gotta go. He goes, I don't care what you're doing, you're gonna have a badge. Now, I gotta admit, you know, I'm just, this is true confessions time, I'm not gonna blow smoke. I, I'm normally a pretty nice guy, but under stress, I can be kind of a edgy guy. And I said, uh, well, I don't really have time. He goes, yeah, sure you do. If you go back into the hallway and go right, there's a registration desk. And I said, and of course, this is the stupidest thing, what's your name? Like, I'm, gonna, you know, I'm, I'm posing a huge threat to his career. What's your name? And he says, my name is Joel, and mention what a good job I'm doing. And so I go back to the registration desk, and I'm huffing and I'm puffing, and I get my badge, and I go back, and Joel waves me in, and as I'm setting up for the meeting, it hits me. Joel is doing a good job. Now, I mean, maybe tact and diplomacy would be the next level of training for Joel, but the point is, the point is, he's hired to do security. And you know what the highlight of that meeting was? I love the speech. I went back, and I shook his hand. I said, I apologize for being a jerk. I said, Joel, you are doing a good job. And... I apologize. And you know what the word is? We don't talk about this in business because it's too squishy. Redemption. We need to have redemption in our interactions. We need to be willing to say not we're perfect and things never go wrong, but that when things are imperfect and we make a mistake that we can turn that to good. Mark Sanborn is a best-selling author of The Fred Factor. How passion in your work and life can turn the ordinary into the extraordinary. You don't need a title to be a leader. A book about how anyone, anywhere can lead, whether or not they have a title. The Encore Effect, how to ramp up your performance in anything you do. This program is especially powerful for sales professionals. And his latest book, Up, Down, or Sideways, how to succeed when times are good, bad, or in between. Focus. You only got three resources. I'm an economist. Let me tell you something. Money's not a resource. Money's a byproduct. Money and funding are a byproduct of the only three resources you've got. Your time, your expertise, and the time and expertise of your team. It's the only three things God gives you. Time, expertise. That's the knowledge and skills you've used to develop with the time and the time and expertise of your team. And how you focus those three things will create your results and money is a result. Funding is a result. I don't know of any entrepreneur or any ministry that began with a whole lot of money. They began with a powerful idea and they used their time and expertise to develop it and make it attractive to investors and donors. That's typically how that works. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to leave this meeting when the dust settles. I'd like you to think about your top six to eight MVP activities. Now, when you hear Kurt, MVP means most valuable player. I use it differently. It stands for most valuable and profitable activities. What are your six to eight most valuable and profitable activities? I do 169 different things every day. The irony is only six to eight count. Here is a commentary on our times. According to USA Today, 73% of Americans say they are insanely busy. There is a woman in my neighborhood whose car license plate says too busy and you know what bothers me about it I think she's bragging the anesthesia of our time is busyness it is not that we do not have time to look up it is that we are afraid to look up and say people come home at the end of the day and they go oh, I've been so busy and you know what they're afraid of that they didn't accomplish anything of importance Leaders know the difference between activity and accomplishment. And that's the question I want you to ask. I want this to be a fun time. I want it to be a challenging time. I want you to stop saying, how busy am I? Because it's the wrong metric and ask, what am I accomplishing? And here's the great irony. You usually do get more accomplished when you do less. You usually accomplish more when you do less, and you do less, but you do the right things. And those are your MVP, your six to eight MVP activities. Now, once you know what they are, here's the second challenge. Spend 60 to 80% of every day doing them. Now, here's how you can tell I'm not a motivational speaker. If I was a motivational speaker, I'd say spend 100% of every day on your MVP activities. Why don't I say that? 
Because I live in the same world you live in. Interruptions, crises, stuff I didn't plan for. I'm giving you 20 to 40% of every day to deal with the stuff you can't control. I'm saying if you can schedule 60 to 80% of every day doing the MVP activities, people will say you are laser focused. The way to an extraordinary life is intentionality. It's choosing. I was flattered in 2004, Tom Peters picked uh, a line out of the Fred Factor as one of his favorite lines of the year. And the line was this, nobody can prevent you from choosing to be exceptional. And you know, that has undergirded my work because I think that, let's just be honest, I have limited time today. We're not always rewarded for it. Sometimes we're not recognized. We're not always taught. But at the end of the day, there are two kinds of people in the world, those that succeed because of and those that succeed in spite of. And it's always about a choice. It is a choice to be extraordinary. Marriott, downtown Chicago, Michigan Avenue. Guy's making me an omelet. His name is Curtis. I know this because his name tag says Curtis. Picks up the omelet when he's done. Picks up a cold plate. He says, sir, no omelet this good should be served on a cold plate. Let me warm the plate for you. He puts it on an open burner for 10 or 15 seconds, warms the plate. Now here is the interesting point. I do not remember how the omelet tasted. It must have been okay. I mean, if it was good, I, or if it was really bad, I would have remembered, but it must have just been good. So what did I remember? I remembered the extra 10 or 15 seconds that Curtis took to warm the plate. Little things, nuances make a big difference. Fortune 1000 companies rely on Mark Sanborn to motivate even the highest leaders to achieve the next level. Mark's genius is being able to craft a message that underscores an organization's mission while remaining relevant to the economic realities. To find out how Mark can bring his energy, enthusiasm, and expertise to work for your organization, contact the provider of this video. Afterward, like so many of Mark's clients, you'll say, I'm glad we hired a pro who made us look so good.